Solomon. Press in, share, invite. into his presence. He's a God of intimacy. He's a God that wants to be with you where you are all the time. And indeed is, but many times we don't notice. Press in to intimacy. It's one of the secrets of an abundant life. If you can't focus on this prayer call, then get off. It's not time to chat with your friends. It's time to get on one accord so someone can get their miracle today. Hit the share button. Periscope, invite your followers. This is not a place to chat with your friends.
is a place to get with the Lord. Do not hide me from your presence, hold me from these shadows, I need you. We're not going to disrespect his presence. Beauty, wrap your arms around me, sing your song of kindness, I need you. Just do not hide me from your presence, pull me from these shadows, I need you. We're starting in 10 seconds. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer, founder of the Ignite Network, and author of our devotional, Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. I take these broadcasts very seriously because somebody is going to see their life change. Somebody is going to break through depression. Somebody is going to receive a word of the Lord that they need to keep going on. So I appreciate your focus. I appreciate you pressing in with me. When we're on one accord, amazing things happen. If you're not able to stay on one accord, I won't be offended if you leave, nor will anybody else. We want the breakthrough. Today's devotion titled, I Will Help You Abound in Hope. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I know sometimes situations look hopeless. It looks as if some of your family members and friends will never accept Christ. It looks as if the pressure will never let up. It looks as if your prayers will never be answered. Be assured that Father is working to make all things beautiful in your life. He is always on time. Don't stop hoping. When you begin to lose your grip on hope in the face of circumstances, turn to me because it is by my power that hope will abound in you. Amen. Scripture references for today, Romans 15, verse 13, Isaiah 61, verse 3, and Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. And the prayer starter from the devotional, you, you've you given me the gift of faith, and you've given me hope as an anchor for my soul. Therefore, I have everything I need to believe, even in the face of what looks impossible. My God, will you remind me of this truth when my soul struggles with hopelessness? And of course, he is the God of hope, and all of his promises are yes and amen. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it until it's finished. He is the ultimate ends wrapper upper. So Father, we praise you and we thank you today that you have breakthrough in mind. You have a blessing in mind. You have increase in mind. You have healing in mind. You have deliverance in mind. You have reconciliation in mind. You have payback in mind. You have freedom in mind. You have the kind intention of your will working in our lives even now. You are working all things together for the good of those who love you. And we say, God, that is us. We love you. We adore you. There's no other God like you who would lay down his life for us. You're not playing games, God. Help us to stop playing games, God. You are not playing a game, Jesus. Help us to stop playing games with one another. Help us to stop taking your word lightly, God. Help us to stop taking your presence lightly, God. Help us, Lord to stop taking suffering 
as if it were some strange thing when your word tells us that there's glory in the suffering oh it's a dirty word it's a dirty word in the body of Christ it's a dirty word in the world suffering but Paul said he would not want to know anything but Christ and the fellowship of his sufferings Peter said if you suffer ah God help us Lord not to look at suffering as a dirty word nobody likes it but through tribulation you enter the kingdom through many tribulations you enter the kingdom through dying to self you enter into a new dimension of life when we lay down our lives God we lose we, we, when we lay down our lives we gain it when we seek to gain our lives we lose it God would you help us get our minds straight today there are loose ends to be wrapped up Lord we praise you and we honor you we don't want to be lackadaisical Christians we don't want to be ambitious Christians in the sense that we're building our own kingdom building our own name building our own whatever God would you help us Lord to die to self I know nobody gonna want to listen to me today there's a breakthrough today the greatest freedom is in dying to self the greatest breakthrough is in dying to the ways of the world the greatest victory is in seeking the kingdom counting the cost paying the price being willing to lay aside the childish things these are what makes the life on this earth more effective more substantial more satisfying more gratifying it's not the new cars and the new boats and the new houses it's not even the husbands and the wives and the children those are all fine and good and even beautiful but it's all about him and walking in him and walking as he walked this week we're pressing in this week this is for the grown-up Christians if you're a baby Christian don't let it deter you understand this is the goal we're working out our salvation with fear and trembling God we don't want to be like the world the Apostles they knew that they had been with Jesus the world the Pharisees the religious system knew that these Apostles had been with Jesus this was one of the earmarks of their lives one of the greatest accomplishments one of the greatest compliments these are those who had been with Jesus their presence driven ministry their presence driven lives so changed them so marked them that everybody around them knew that there was something different there was something special God this is what we attain to Lord above all this is what we want above all this is what we want above all this is what we want we want this more than freedom from debt although you've provided for freedom from debt we want this more even than healing in our bodies although you've provided for healing in our bodies we want to be like you walk with you talk like you with you move live have our being in you we want this this expression of Christianity coming from our hearts from our mouths changing our lives from the inside out so that we can change others lives from the outside in through the preaching of the gospel through being a living epistle a true and faithful witness just like our Savior just like Jesus God would you help us today to get serious not into condemnation but to get serious to get serious about laying down our lives in prayer laying down our lives for the gospel laying down our lives for another whatever cause you've called us to whatever purpose that you have in mind whatever it is we're supposed to lay our lives down to and for God make it plain there are some who laid down their lives for a progress of medicine and that's a beautiful thing they studied and studied and practiced and practiced some great inventors in the world lay down their lives literally spending 18 20 hours a day in labs to create things like electricity and all sorts of inventions that help us to spread the gospel ultimately God help us to find that passion help us to find our purpose help us to find uh, and, and walk in that calling to walk as Paul said worthy of our calling because you've called us you created us in Christ Jesus to do good works your word says we must do the works of God we must do the works of our father you speak of works faith without works is dead God help us to stop confessing you and then not doing anything to make your name known ah help us Lord to stop confessing you glory hallelujah in church we're having a great old time and we get outside the four walls and somehow we don't know you 
or the world doesn't know that we know you because we act just like them ah. God would you help us today to get serious about Christianity listen I know this is not the kind of prayer that builds a prayer broadcast but I am not praying to satisfy you not your flesh anyway I am praying to satisfy God I'm trying to lead a people on this broadcast on today in particular yeah we have breakthrough flows and we have prophetic swirls and we have all those things it's all part of the bigger picture but today God is calling us to a deeper place this week he's been calling us to a deeper place he's been calling us to a deeper place it's not about what we want God is what it's what you want is not about our own success it's about your success God help us to see that when we create an atmosphere where your spirit can dwell when we create a presence friendly church a presence friendly ministry a presence friendly friendly home a presence friendly workplace where you are exalted when we create these atmospheres by the words of our mouth by the deeds of our hands by the thoughts of our mind when we create these atmospheres there's joy there's presence there's 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 love there's peace we can change the world we can turn the world upside down but not by being ambitious for our own greedy gain not by being ambitious in the definition of the world we can turn the world upside down by embracing Christ's ambition his ambition that not one would be lost that no one would escape the opportunity to hear the gospel and to accept it as wooed by the Holy Spirit God would you help us today to get serious help us today to get serious God help us today to get serious you didn't leave us here just so we could have a three-bedroom house and a white picket fence and 2.5 children and a dog you left us here on this earth to be salt and light you left us here on this earth to be that city up on a hill the body of Christ shining forth the glorious gospel that millions and masses would be saved from eternal hellfire God help us to get serious help up help us to wrap up your loose ends God because you want to come back for a church without spot or wrinkle you want to come back for a glorious bride you want to return in all of your glory with the heavenly host you want to come back and finally put the enemy under your feet completely once and for all you want to come back and complete what you started you want to come back but you're waiting on your people to get real to get serious to get raw to say I can do better for God not out of fleshly works not out of performance oriented religion you are the ultimate ends wrapper upper Lord you have loose ends that you want to wrap up and you're trying to 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 use us as your instruments to wrap up these loose ends to tie up these things Philippians 1 and 6 and I'm sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ there are loose ends in us that need to get wrapped up there's hurts and pains in us that we can't even see and we might walk this earth for the rest of our life without a fully renewed mind and a fully healed soul because we can't see and we don't know what we don't know but on that day on that day when he returns in all of his glory on the day of the Lord on the day of Jesus Christ he will complete that good work in you and there will be no more tears and there will be no more pain and there will be no more sin there will be no more temptation all of these things will fade away only faith love and hope will abide so help us Lord today to help you finish what you started Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 says better is the end of a thing than the beginning better is the end than the beginning why better is the end the preacher said better is the end Solomon said better is the end than the beginning because there's completion and there's a key of finishing and we see it all throughout the Bible you can't see the increase you can't see the full measure of glory until you finish a thing Paul finished his course he said in 2nd Timothy 4 I have fought the good fight I have finished the race 
I've kept the faith. God, help us to walk in that same spirit so that we can rest. Lord shows me there's some of you that have so many loose ends that you've yet to wrap up that you can't even rest. You can't rest. You go to bed thinking about all the things that need to get done. You wake up thinking about all the things that need to get done. And all through the day, there's a fire, 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 all sorts of new issues, all sorts of new problems that arise, partly because the end didn't get loose, uh, uh, wrapped up. Ah, are you tracking with me? This is going to help somebody. Listen, I've had this happen in my life. Something didn't get wrapped up. When it was supposed to get wrapped up, the, the end didn't get tied. It remained loose. And because that thing didn't get done when it was supposed to get done, it had, there's maybe there's a late fee. Let's put it in natural terms. There's a late fee or, or there's a missed opportunity or there's just plain old fashioned stress, dread hanging over your head. You could use that with taxes. Didn't tie up your, I'm giving you a practical example. You didn't tie up your taxes on time. Now you've got penalties. Now, instead of a refund, you, 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 you lost most of your refund because of the penalty and you've got stress and you've got dread and you and your husband or your wife, you're fighting over it. Strife. Come on, Lord, help us Lord to examine our lives in this season and wrap up the loose ends to tie the knots, to close the doors, whatever proverb or uh, cliche you want to use. God, we need to wrap up these loose ends. We have come to a point. We're almost entering into a new season, a new year. Help us, Lord. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Proverbs 13, 19 says, A desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul. Come on. There's a key of finishing. When Moses finished the temple... I'm sorry, when Solomon finished the temple, uh, the glory came to the point that the priests could not minister. Everybody was on their face. Listen, there's a glory that comes in finishing a thing. So, Father, help us, Lord, today to assess not just our heart. Listen, there's some things in your soul that you've been working on all year half-heartedly. There's some things, there's some issues in your life. There's some, some, uh, not all of you, but I'm, I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to a lot, a lot of people. There's some things that you know in your character or in your habits. There's some things that you know that, that are hurts and wounds. There's some things that you know that are out of line in your heart and in your mind. And you've been working on it kind of a little bit here and a little bit there all year long. Beloved, it's time to press in. If you have to shut yourself in a room for three days, if you don't have three days, one day, get it right with God because there is coming a great expectation and your expectation shall not be cut off. There's some of you, you've got business projects or family projects or house projects. Some of you hurricane hit your house and your roof is still jacked up from two years ago. Whatever it is, whatever needs to get wrapped up in your life. Listen, even if you can't get it done by Jan, Jan 1, set your heart to finish it. Set your heart to press through. Oh, but it's holiday time and I want to I wanna have, you know, dumplings and, 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 and eggnog and have it. But get these things wrapped up. It's time to wrap up loose ends. God, help us, Lord, to put our hand to that plow and to cross the finish line. I know some of you are weary. I know you've had a hard year. This was a hard year. It, it, in some ways, it was one of the hardest years of my life. I kid you not. I had so much increase and so much good things happening, but on the other side, I had a lot of bad stuff happen to me. A lot of it. A lot of it. A lot of bad stuff. I get it. I was weary too. But guess what? If you don't faint, you'll break through. Some of you are weary, you're worn out, you're overloaded, you're stressed. If you'll listen, beloved, if you'll just keep <laughs> if you'll just keep standing because sometimes that's all you can do. When you've done all you can do, stand. So, Father, help us today to identify those loose ends and wrap them up. Help us, Lord, not to neglect 
the things we need to put our hand to. I break that, that mindset that causes us to procrastinate. That causes us to, us to, to like Scarlett O'Hara, why should I do this today when I can do it tomorrow? To keep putting things off that are stressing us out. And it's stressing us out more because we're putting it off. God, help us to break this vicious cycle. Help us, Lord, to find the time. God, your word says that you redeem the time. Your word says that our times are in your hands. God, forgive us for any which way that we have wasted time, that we did not put our hand to the plow in the moment that we should have when the grace was there to make a major breakthrough. When the wind of God was at our back and instead of continuing to push another hour to finish, to wrap up, to get momentum to carry us into the next day, the next week, the next month. We took our hand off the plow and said, well, I want to watch Netflix. I want to, I want to, whatever. I want to go out to dinner with my friends. Whatever it was, when we interrupted our own momentum. <laughs> Come on, that was the word of the Lord for mid-year that I released was momentum. I've seen it, and that was when I began to see momentum. Sometimes I'm prophesying to myself as much as you. It was July 1st that I came back from Europe absolutely healed because of the curses that people I was aligned with launched against me. The wicked, nasty curses that had released witchcraft and infirmity into my body. It was July 1st when I stepped back on American soil, feeling 15 years younger and running with momentum that I hadn't seen in three years because of the warfare. The second half of the year truly was one of momentum. But beloved, if you interrupt your own momentum, you don't have anybody to blame but yourself. You can't blame the devil and you can't blame me. Praise God. You can't blame your husband and you can't blame your wife and you can't blame your children. If you yourself interrupted your momentum, if you yourself stopped short because you wanted to take a phone call, you wanted to watch a new video, whatever. Father, help us, Lord. To make up for lost time. Help us, Lord, to pick up the mantle of momentum. Ah, like how Elijah outran Ahab back to Jezreel. He outran Ahab. How Jonah made a three days journey in one day when he went back to Nineveh to obey the Lord. See, when when you begin to obey the Lord, even if you had been disobedient, even if you did drop the ball, when you decide in your heart, okay, what? I repent. Yes, I messed up. I should have done my taxes. I should have fixed my roof. I should have filled out that application. And I didn't, but I'm going to fix, I'm going to finish it now. I'm going to fix it. When you turn your heart back to God, and say, I'm going to obey. I'm going to do what's right. The wind. The wind of God oftentimes will come behind you and help you to make up for lost time. Why? Because God is good and he's gracious. He's so much better than we think he is. He's good. I've seen things just turn around immediately when I've put my head to it, when I put my heart in it, when I put my hand back upon it, things that were lagging, lagging behind things that, that, that I messed up from neglect. I've seen God restore it fast when I got in line with his heart. So father, help us to get in line with your heart. Help us to put our hand to what you want us to put our hand to, not what we just think we need to put our hand to, not what it's ha, not what it's easy to put our hand to. God, help us to stop taking the easy way out. Help us to stop taking the easy way out. Help us to stop taking the easy way out. Help us to stop taking the easy way out. Help us to stop taking the easy way out. It's not always easy. You didn't promise us a, an easy path. You promised us a narrow path that leads to life. You didn't promise an easy path. You promised that there would be many trials, many tribulations in the world, but you promised us that we could still be of good cheer because you've overcome the world. You didn't promise us an easy road. You said there's going to be persecution. And you told us what to do when we encounter it, to bless, to bless, to bless, to bless. You didn't promise us an easy road. Your word tells us there will be suffering. Oh, it's such a dirty word in the Christianity. Your word told us there would be suffering. Your word told us there would be suffering. Your word told us there would be tribulation. Your word told us there would be temptation. Your word tells us, it tells us, it tells us there will be many obstacles. 
That's why you say we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, because there's going to be a lot of things we've got to conquer. So, Father, help us today to shift our mentality from woe is me to wow is God. Help us, Lord, to shift our thinking from, oh, I'm so sorry for myself, to, oh, I am walking in the better part. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I walk in abundance. Everything I put my hand to, it prospers beyond my wildest dreams. I has not seen nor ear heard. What you want to do for us, God. Oh, I thank you that you're a good, good father. I thank you that you know the way of escape and that you are the way of escape and you lead us and guide us into victory in every battle that you call us to fight you lead us and guide us into victory you are our strong tower your name is a strong tower we run into you and we are safe we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength there is nothing too hard for you so when we work the works of God we will see results we will see it by faith we will not grow weary in well-doing. We will not give up God. We're not going to faint. We're going to wait upon you. We're going to get a new strategy. We're going to regroup. We're going to say, yes, Lord, you are God. And you are the, 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 the truth giver, the truth maker. When you say a thing, it becomes truth, God. We lean and depend on you, Jesus, and not on our own understanding so that you can, you can order our steps. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path you are magnificent and you are holy and you shall never leave us or forsake us even to the end of the age you are faithful nothing's too hard for you beloved nothing that God has told you to do nothing that life has thrown your way nothing the devil has put in your face none of it's too hard for you that that's a lie from the pit of hell Lord, let our faith arise today to run forward and do what you want us to do, whatever it is. We give you praise and honor and glory, God, as we seek to wrap up loose ends. We seek to wrap up loose ends. We seek to wrap up the loose ends in our life, God. We seek to wrap up the loose ends in our life, God. We seek to wrap up the loose ends. Lord, we don't want to continue with this stress and this fear and, and all these things. We don't want to keep on in the same way that we've been going. We want to wrap up these loose ends. We want to tie them up. We want to tie them up like a Christmas bow. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to deal with the consequences of our past actions. Whatever penalties, whatever reconciliation and relationship, Lord, help us to tie it all up. We give you praise and honor and glory. We magnify your name because you are worthy. You are holy. There's no other God like you. You don't, you don't have to compete for our attention, God. We, we, we ask you, Lord, to help us to give you our attention so freely that you would never have to feel slighted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now you can see why I didn't want the distractors on here today. People that want to have conversations with their friends are not here for the right reason they can text their friend later they can direct message their friend later they can inbox their friend later not while we're trying to get on one accord this is not just a silly practice that I do every morning I take it seriously people's lives are at stake people are making decisions to commit suicide and they get on this broadcast and they find life People are on the verge of divorce, but they find a way to suck it up and ask their spouse to forgive them and work on the marriage. Come on. This is not a play game to me. It's not a game to me. I haven't been doing this for five years because it's a game. So 
So please, when you come on this broadcast, please don't grieve the Holy Ghost. It's not family reunion time. Please don't grieve the Holy Spirit. We're exalting him, and I look down, and I see people, hey, yeah, bro, we got to catch up. That's just, it's not the place for it. So we give you praise and honor and glory, God, for what you want to do in our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. I've got some uh, announcements I want to make, but I want to give you an opportunity to sow. I know that, honestly, probably most people don't want to sow into a call like this because it's it's a, a call to grow up. It's a call to lay aside the childish things. It's a challenge. Maybe you don't feel like you've had grace for that. Maybe you feel like it's just been overwhelming for you. There's grace. His grace is sufficient. And I pray that you'll be able to receive and tap into the grace of God that dwells on the inside of you to do what you're convicted in your heart to do. If you're convicted to give, if you are feeling led to give, if you want to help support this ministry, look, I know it's not popular to pray these things, and I know it's not popular to tell people not to have a little side chat on your prayer broadcast, but... I imagine it's these same people that sit there and talk while the pastor is preaching and have a running dialogue with their buddy or get on their phone and text for the whole service. It's just irreverent. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm really grieved by what I saw. It's irreverent. It's one thing. If you're saying amen to something somebody else said, that's not a chit chat. I'm talking about, Hey bro, we need to catch up. Hey bro, you want to go out to dinner? Hey sis, you know, you want to have lunch today? Come on, please. Please. No, it was on it was on Periscope. You guys on Periscope saw it. So I really you know, I don't do this for donations anyway, but if <laughs> God knows I've got other things I could be doing right now, but I do this to serve you. If you feel led to sow, we want to give you the opportunity to do that. I'm gonna do it just quickly. You can sow at jenniferleclair.org slash give. You can become a partner. At jenniferleclair.org slash give. And somebody else on Periscope is acting up. God is love. Why would you tell somebody to leave? If you're disrespecting the Lord, I have no tolerance for it. You can go do it somewhere else. There's a lot of different broadcasts you can get on while people are preaching, prophesying. And you can sit there and have a running conversation with your buddy there. But not on this broadcast, please. Seriously. It's okay to say hi to me. It's okay to shout out when you come on. It's okay to, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm talking specifically about those people who are making lunch plans and plans to go to the movies later tonight. All that kind of stuff. JenniferLeclair.org slash give. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. 754, that's right, Kimberly. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. The glory train. 754-701. The glory train confirmation. That's right, Tanya. Tell Craig I said hello. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. Amen, blood washed. 754, okay, uh, what, am I, what am I missing? P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Thank you, Daryl Pinder. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Am I missing anything? Cash app, dollar sign, Jennifer LeClaire. Father, I thank you. Hello, New Zealand. You're good, Annalise. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you bless everyone listening to this broadcast, whether they came on for ill purposes or they came on not respecting your presence or they came on with a heart hungry for you. We ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus to bless them with all abundance in Jesus' name. Lord, multiply this this offering back to the givers in the name of the Lord. Multiply it in Jesus' name. 
I lift up all of my Awakening Blaze leaders, my Awakening House of Prayer leaders all over the world, my Ignite Network members, all the ministries that we cover. I lift them up to you in the name of Jesus, my staff, my volunteers, my partners, all of my vendors in the name of Jesus. I bless them. I say, Lord, bless them indeed. Enlarge their territory. Let your hand rest upon them and keep them from evil and from causing pain. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is good. Listen, there is a Mornings with the Holy Spirit app now. I don't think it's on Android yet. Therefore, I really haven't announced it. But it is there. There's a Mornings with the Holy Spirit app. We'll be adding some more features in the next few weeks. But it's pretty much all set up for you. The only thing that we don't have on there yet is the podcast, which those are set to go up in the next, starting in the next 10 days. The podcast. Praise God. Amen. That's going to go up. There's a Mornings with the Holy Spirit app. You can go and get that off the App Store. I don't think it's on Google Android yet, so I will make a more formal announcement later. Uh, there's also a Mornings with the Holy Spirit giveaway. We're coming into the five-year anniversary of this call, and I'm offering a few prizes. Uh, five different people will win a 20-minute private prayer call with me. 25 people will win a Holy Spirit Evenings with the Holy Spirit devotional. 25 will win a Holy Spirit journal. And uh, there's, that's there at giveaway.morningswiththeholyspirit.com. Giveaway.morningswiththeholyspirit.com. Someone saying, how do you get the floodgates? You're going to want to go subscribe to my YouTube channel because on January 1st on YouTube, we're going to do a replay of the 40 days for those of, that wanted to listen to it again and wanted a convenient way to do that. So subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to get those replays of the floodgates They'll also be on the app for easy convenience. The reason why we built the app is because many people, we get calls and emails all the time saying, well, I can't find it. I don't know how to sign on. I don't know how to log in. This makes it easy uh, for you to do that. Also, you can easily access the archives. You can uh, easily sew if you want to. You can easily listen to podcasts. It's all there for you. Mornings with the Holy Spirit app. That's why we did that. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. My prophetic release tour is expanding to uh, London and to Singapore. Um, we just made, and Prophet Vanessa is like, what, Singapore? Yes, we're going to do a, a prophetic release. The prophetic release tour has gone international. We're going to go to London and to Singapore. Uh, I need to get those event brights up. They're not there yet, but if you're listening to this, uh, by the time you hear it, it might be up. Um, we're going to try to get those up early this morning. Uh, so the prophetic release tour is uh, mostly in the southeast of the United States. Uh, we're going to New York, D.C., uh, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, Tampa, uh, Charlotte, uh, Mississippi, and then also on the West Coast, Colinga, California, and San Diego. Uh, so we'll be going uh, out there, uh, out west as well. And uh, don't do as much stuff out west. Um, I probably should go out west more. Um, but it's a lot easier for me to travel through the Southeast. So don't miss it in California. Uh, you'll go find out the registration there at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Uh, you can go sign up there, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. On tomorrow, the 20th, we'll be having the Seer Zone, the next episode of the Seer Zone with myself and Apostle Jonathan Stidham. And uh, there is a lot more that's going to be going on in the new year. My challenge right now is I've got to go tape TV for the next three days. And also I have book deadlines. And it's just there's so, you know, the thing about opportunity is sometimes opportunity is overwhelming. That's why you need the right people. But I believe I've, I've got a few new people on board, especially in realms that I've lacked that will start at the beginning of the year. And I'm excited about that. So thanks for all your prayers. Go to prayforjennifer.com and get involved in my uh, intercessory prayer team if you'd like to. Uh, prayforjennifer.com is where you'll find that, find that bringing on somebody to try to help me keep better track of that hallelujah God is good God is good alright we're going to wrap it up there Facebook you are troopers bless you I'll be back with you. Uh, I'll be back with the. I'll be back with you tomorrow for sure. Maybe before then. Bless you.